Today we're going to be talking about how to find your passion. Now, I get this question asked a lot where people are like, I want to know, I, I want to find something that I'm passionate about. I hate the job that I'm at. I hate what I do right now. What are some tips to find something that I'm passionate about? And I'm going to be honest with you. Nobody really knows how to find what you are passionate about. That's something that you need to find out. It's different for everybody. But what I can do is offer you a few tips that I know have helped me and also some of the people that I know coaching clients as well. And there's three things that you really want to think about when you're trying to find something that you are passionate about. The first thing is what is something that you love to do? Ask yourself these questions. Number one, what is, what is something that you love to do? You do it anyways. If, even if sometimes if, if it's a hobby, you have to pay to do it. But what's something that you would do for free? Something that you absolutely love doing. The second question is what are you good at? What's something that you're good at? And the third one, if you're not good at anything, this could actually help you as well, is what are you curious about? So what do you love to do? What are you good at? And what are you curious about? Usually if you can find some sort of intersection between two or all three of those, you're gonna find something that you could be passionate about. And the reason why I say this is because if you're, if you're sitting there and you're listening and you're like, I'm not really good at a whole lot. I'm kind of a little bit of a jack of all trades. I'm kind of good at this. I'm kind of good at that, but never, I'm not really a master at anything. That's why I say something that you're curious about. Because if it's something that you're curious about, the good thing about that means that you are willing to research, to put time, to put energy into what that new thing is, to learn it. So if you love to do something, and you're not really good at something, so let's say you love to do something, but you're just kind of curious about it. If those two intersect in some sort of way, then you found, you found something that could possibly be something that you could be passionate about. Because a lot of people say, I don't have any passions. And the next question I have for you, if you don't have any passions is, what did you love to do as a kid? And I'm asking you these questions so you can kind of use them as brainstorms, whether you want to pause this and listen to, you know, or listen to me as you're jotting these down is, what did you love to do as a kid? What were some of the things that you did whenever you were a child, when money didn't matter, when you were just having fun all of the time? What was something that you loved to do as a kid? The next question I have for you to try to help you jog your mind to find something that you're passionate about is the question, what would you do if money were no object? So if money didn't exist, how would you be spending your free time? You probably wouldn't be at the job that you're at, right? If money didn't exist, what would you be doing with your free time? Or if you were just the richest person in the world, what would you be doing? Let's say you, you donated tons of money to charity, so obviously that can't be one of them. But if you were rich and you had no care in the world, what would you be doing with your free time? See, all of these things, if you start to think about them, you start to jog your memory, you start to get a little bit of an idea of some things that you could be passionate about and things that you actually might be able to spend your time doing. Now, I'll give you a couple of examples. Some of you are sitting there listening and you're saying, well, I'm really passionate about this, but I don't think I could turn that into money. There's two things you have to think about. Number one, just because you're passionate about something doesn't mean that it has to be a profession, right? And that's a key. A lot of people think, I need to be able to monetize my, my one thing that I'm most passionate about. You don't have to be able to monetize your passion at all, to be honest with you. All you have to do is have a job that's bearable enough to be able to have a great life, to pay the bills, but then also be able to fund your passion, right? Most people think they have to have a job that funds that, or that is that passion. You don't have to have that. If you can find a way to find something that you're passionate about and make money off of it, well, hell yeah, that's what we all want, right? There's not a whole lot of lucky people that are able to do that. So if you're able to have a good life, to pay the bills, to do what needs to be done and have a little bit extra money to fund that passion and be able to do that, if that's what lights you up inside, well, that's, that's how you create happiness in your life. So you don't have to make money off of your passion. Now, if you do want to make money off of your passion, you might be saying, well, this is weird. This is obscure. Nobody's really into these types of things. I will tell you this. If you search long and hard on the internet, you will find that there is somebody most likely making money 
off of the one thing that you're passionate about. There's tons of different ways. So let me, let me give you an example. Let's say that you're, you wrote down you're really passionate about the, uh, the New York Giants, right? That's what you're most passionate about in this world is the New York Giants. And you're looking at it and you're saying, well, I don't play for the New York Giants. I'm never going to own the New York Giants. There's no way for me to make money as a, a fan of the New York Giants. Hell yeah, there is. There's a ton of different ways you can make money. And this is where you can start diving into how to make money online off of whatever you're passionate about. Now, I'm not here to tell you how to make money off that passion. I'm here to tell you how to find that passion first off, because most of the time people don't even know what that passion actually is. But you know, a couple ideas that pop into my head right away. You could have a podcast and you could have a, you know, a secret members group where they pay you a monthly fee to be in it. And maybe what you do is you buy group tickets and people get discounts to go see the New York Giants. Or maybe what you do is you get some hookups in the front office after you start building up this, this base of people. You have to realize the New York Giants, if you have a base of followers that love the New York Giants, the New York Giants are going to want to work with you. Why? Because brands want to work with people who have a following that are interested in what they have. So your dream or your passion of the New York Giants could eventually turn into money and a direct connection with the thing that you're most passionate about, the New York Giants. Now you might be out there and saying, well, if I had all of the money in the world, I would spend all of my time with my children, right? I wouldn't, I wouldn't want to go out and do other things. I want to spend all of my time with my children. I want to be a better, better mother, you might say. Well, I'll tell you what, there's a lot of really, really successful mother bloggers out in the world, mother vloggers out in the world. They don't have a YouTube station, they have a, a blog site or have an Instagram or have a Facebook. There's a lot of money to be made on the internet with that one thing that you're passionate about. I know somebody, for instance, who's, who's very passionate about having a family farm and her goal is to take that farm that they have, she's got the four kids, they love the pigs and the chickens and they have the dogs, they have everything, that's goats, they have all kinds of animals all over the place, cows. And what she's doing is she's turning that, which is one of her passions, being a great mother and raising her kids on her farm, just like they did in the old days, and writing a blog on that and teaching other mothers how to do that as well. Because a lot of other mothers or you know, fathers as well, families want to be able to have a self-sustaining farm. Well, if that's her passion and she's become good at it, she can eventually get a following and turn that into money. And the great part about it is she's turning that into money by helping people do what they want to do as well. So there's a million ways to make money online. So once again, we're trying to talk about how to find your passion, not fund your passion or to monetize your passion, but there are many, many ways to do so. So if money were no object or if you were rich, what would you be doing with your time? And one of the things that I got from, I, I interviewed uh, Jeff Hoffman, who was the founder, billionaire founder of Priceline.com. And the way that he found the idea or came up with the idea of Priceline.com was he was doing something called info sponging. And so, you know, you might be passionate about something, but I always recommend that you take time and try to learn something or at least read something different every single day. And the reason why I say this is because he found out about, uh, or he started Priceline.com because of the fact that he was reading an article about how when bananas start to go bad, like they're closer to going bad, but they're not there yet. They're still ripe, but they're almost about to turn. The price of them actually gets cheaper. And the reason why is because they're trying to move them off of the shelves and at least make some money off of it. And he thought to himself, well, it's that, if that's the case, maybe you could do the exact same thing with airline tickets. He became a billionaire off of reading an article about bananas being cheaper right before they go bad. Now, he does something called info sponging, and that's how he got this idea. Info sponging is what he does where he'll take about 20 minutes a day and he'll read an article or watch a movie or a video, only about 20 minutes, not the entire day, learning something new in an industry that has nothing to do with what he actually does. And what he said, the way he came up with this idea was he found out that the people who started McDonald's in the way they actually came up to bring, have a successful company. And uh, it might have been McDonald's, it might not have been McDonald's, but it was, it was oh, excuse me, it wasn't McDonald's, but it was the company who, who actually um, started the drive through to go and get fast food. And what happened was this guy who owned the, the, the restaurant was really, really passionate about how can we make more money? How can we be more efficient? Well, we can only make a hamburger in so much time. We can only take a soda machine and fill it up as quick as possible before it turns into all foam. So how can we be better? How can we get better at this? 
And what he did was he said every Tuesday he would go out on a drive and just go into different businesses that had absolutely nothing to do with the fast food industry. And he would go and see what they do and see if he could pull little ideas from them. And then one day he was actually walking into a bank and he noticed that there's a whole bunch of construction outside. And he walked in the bank and he said, sir, what's with all of this construction that you have? Why is there so much construction going on outside? And he said, oh, what we're actually doing is we're making, instead of them having to come in and go to a bank teller, they can actually stay inside of their car and talk to the teller so it just makes it quicker and more efficient. And he immediately thought, that's it. That's the way to make my business more efficient. I'm going to put a drive through and he made this idea up of a drive through for fast food at least, obviously not for banking. And he was the very first company and fast food company to put in drive throughs That made his business more efficient. And he came up with that idea because he went info sponging and going outside of the box of what he normally does. He eventually took that company, and this is why I was thinking McDonald's, he eventually took his company and sold it to McDonald's for millions of dollars because they wanted to learn how he became so efficient with the drive through So something you could do is info sponging. Learn different things. Push yourself out of your comfort zone. If you keep doing the same thing over and over and over again every single day, you're not going to find something that you're passionate about. right? There might be passions out there waiting for you, but you just haven't taken the time to go out there and start learning new things. Start meeting new people. Start going to different networking groups. Maybe you go to meetup.com and start seeing all of the different events that are in your town that you could try and see if you like. Now, it might be a little uncomfortable. Networking groups are always uncomfortable or going and meeting new people is always uncomfortable. But it might be something that you're passionate about. You might go once and it might be like, oh, I'm not that passionate about it. But you might go to something and be like, this is, this is actually really fun. I would like to go back and do this again next week. That's pushing yourself out of your comfort zone. If you don't know your passion, well, doing the exact same thing over and over again every day is not going to help you find this passion that you don't know about yet. What I will tell you this, though, is it takes time. It takes a lot of time, some, sometimes it takes a lot of time, to go do different things and try different things before you actually find something that you are passionate about. But the one thing I'll tell you is this. You don't have to worry. And I, th I find a lot of people really worry about their passion because they're trying to find something they're going to do forever. It's going to be their, their passion and the way to make money forever. You don't have to worry about that because the, the, one of the, the things that really put me at ease and puts a lot of people at ease when you're talking about your passion is there's two different types of people in this world. There's a hummingbird and there's a jackhammer, right? The jackhammer is the person that knows what they're passionate about and they know 100% and they go at it every single day and they work their tail off trying to become the best they possibly can at that one thing, that one passion. That's a very small percentage of people in the world. Most people though, most people are hummingbirds. A hummingbird goes to a flower, gets all of the nectar, everything it can out of that flower, and then it goes to the next one. It stays there for a little while, it gets everything that it can out of that, not, that one, and then it goes to the next one. That's how most people are. You don't have to worry about what you're gonna be passionate about the rest of your life. What you have to think about is, what can I be passionate about? What can I do and put a lot of time and learn and try to get better at and maybe monetize for the next two or three years. And then after two or three years, I'll ask myself, is this what I want to still be doing or is it time for me to move on to something new? You don't have to find something that you're so obsessed with, that you're so passionate about, that you're going to be doing for the rest of your life. Because there's a pretty good chance if you're like most people, you're not a jackhammer. You're probably a hummingbird. But it takes time. Put yourself out of your comfort zone and ask yourself the questions. What do I love to do? What am I good at? What's something that I'm curious about? What did I love to do as a kid? What do I love to do now? And what would I do if money was no object or if I was absolutely rich? That is the key to trying to find out what you are passionate about. So if you like this video, please do me a favor. Please click the like button. If you have any questions, put the questions down below. And if you like this video and you want to see some more, please consider hitting that subscribe button so that you never miss another episode. And I'll see you later.